Welcome to the other Discovery Show, the bonus show from the podcast Discovery Show. That's about all of the other things we've discovered throughout the week. It's not about podcasts. I'm Kirk. And I'm Zach. And I honestly discovered this from your children, but I think we need to talk about it. (laughs) Fortnite is in the middle of some heated drama with Apple... The Apple, what, what do they call it? The the App, the App Store. Store. And mm-hmm. then also the Google Play Store. So they're going against the big guys. And there's a lot of weird stuff happening around it. Like, first of all, they also showed me, showed me that on Fortnite, you can watch this video that is literally a pretty much shot-for-shot shot remake of the 1984 trailer where it's like essentially them fighting back against the man. And it's like, Mm, I am not sure that... Okay, so let's back up. What has happened is Fortnite is no longer available on the App Store or the Google Play Store. And so this game is obviously still enormous with... I like I feel like it might be being mean, but it's mostly kids, I feel like. And that's fine. It's just I feel like it's mostly kids. I've been listening to a lot of Reply All, and both of them play a lot of Fortnite, apparently, or at least they used to, which is nuts. There was a time when it was wider spread. It was really, really popular, and I think that it's just dropped a little bit. You know, people have switched to other BRs and stuff that were looking for other stuff. But it's still a very popular game. They still make a ton of money, but not being able to have it on mobile devices is interesting. So it's not available on the two biggest like app platforms. And the reason why is because Epic Games decided they didn't want to put they didn't want to pay anybody stupid surcharge fee. They didn't want to pay either of those app stores to have microtransactions on the store. And so they literally sent a message or like an email to the executives saying that they don't want to pay it. And then what they did was they completely subverted the app store. So instead of buying the the in-game currency is called V-Bucks. So instead of doing that through the App Store, you were able to do it through Epic Games. You were able to do it through Fortnite itself at a discount. And so that breaks terms of service. That is breaking terms of service with both Google and Apple. And so both of them have kicked them off of the platform. And then what uh, Epic tried to do is they said they're going to make their own App Store and they want it to be available on the on the Apple App Store, and they're like, no, like it's not. It's it wasn't a hard decision for them. But yeah, basically, as soon as you try to cut them their platform out of the process, you are in violation of terms of service if you're doing microtransactions. Um, there so there definitely they, is some like, I don't know if if you're looking at an article or anything, but there's definitely some. Uh, hypocrisy in a way or something. I don't know the right word, but there's a lot of apps that are allowed to not do the same terms of service that are bypassing it that Apple and Google are allowing him to. Are you sure about that? Yeah. I think Amazon's one of them. I mean, because you can make all of these purchases using the app and they, they, I, I read one of the articles and it named a few of these companies that you're allowed to make purchases and Apple and Google make zero money off of it. Yeah, it um, sounds like uh, Epic did not sign a good contract with either of these companies, with the, uh, either of these app stores then. So it's one of those things where like... <sighs> uh, and I wouldn't call it hypocrisy. They signed a contract that had terms of service oh, no, that, no, I that agree. they blew it's, up. You know, my kids were like, well, I don't like Apple anymore. And I'm like, it, it's not really them. It's Epic that's trying to make. No, and, like, well, they're yeah, making Epic's just trying to make the V-Bucks. money. Yeah. And I'm like, they're probably still making more money on that 20% discount on V-Bucks than they were paying to Apple. Yeah, that'd be my guess. So it's, like, uh, but it's just this whole interesting thing because then you get all these weird side things happening. So right now, you can buy an iPhone that has Fortnite installed for four times the price that it should be sold on eBay. Like people are selling old phones (laughs) just because they have Fortnite on it 
on eBay. Old phones. Like you should Dang not buy it, this. I should have downloaded Fortnite. <laughs> you really should have. You could have just sold your phone to some dumb dumb <laughs> who wants Fortnite really bad on their phone. And my kids keep asking me, like, no, you can't, because then you're gonna want my phone all the time. You cannot download Fortnite on my phone. <laughs> Wait, you can't, right? Now you can't, but yeah. I could have. <laughs> See, now you have an excuse. Now you have an excuse. Like, nope, no Fortnite. Sorry about that. I, I don't I've tried to play like some like shooter type stuff on a phone and it's bad anyways. Like I don't I don't know who that's for really. I mean iPad maybe. I don't know. I, I couldn't do it. But it's just interesting that this whole thing is turned into shenanigans. I think it's very bold to act like you are the protagonist in nineteen eighty four because you broke terms of service on an app store deal. Um and it's just wild because everybody's freaking out. And it's funny because we're really Epic is like flailing around, but Apple um, they basically just said it's, it's there. They can fix it. They can get back on the app store anytime they want by it's like getting back <laughs> on their terms of service. So, uh, the quote from, uh, from Apple and literally Epic has filed a lawsuit saying that essentially they have removed delisted or refused to list their app. And so that's essentially, I think their, their, tr- their very stretched reach for 1984 is they've been censored. I guess is their is their thought, um, and so Apple said we very much want to keep the company as part of the Apple Developer Program and their apps on the store. The problem is Epic has created for itself is one. The problem Epic has created for itself is one that can easily be remedied if they submit an update of their app that reverts it to comply with the guidelines they agreed to and which apply to all developers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's one of those things that I don't know what's going to happen. I I don't play Fortnite, so it's not really that big of a deal to me, but. It's just funny to see the amount of drama around this thing. It is it is a lot of drama, and it was definitely trending all over social media and stuff, and it's still a big story, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. They didn't follow their contract, so Signed it's not a bad there contract. anymore. <laughs> they probably did find out that like Amazon Marketplace can do it without it. But there's a few different apps. I don't remember which. which but Amazon is a different size company than Epic Games. Uh, yeah. All right, so I woke up this morning to a discovery that was direct sent to me from our old friend, Brian. Uh, He's in the podcast Discovery Club. So essentially, it's a discovery from somebody else. But they sent it to me, and I love it. It's terrifying, but it's very fascinating. This is an article about how thieves can copy a key by recording its sound. So basically... There's a university in Singapore that has research that shows that all a thief needs is a 3D printer and some sort of way to record the sound of your key going in a lock. Uh, And they can create a replica of your key. The method is dubbed, I don't know if it's Spiky? Or spy key. I'm assuming spy key, but it's S P I, uh, then key. Uh, works on what is known as a pin tumbler lock, one of the most common types of locks for homes. As the key slides into the lock, its ridges push six metal springs backed pins into specific positions. Uh, and when they're aligned correctly, it opens the lock. And this is the you know the the key that, the the lock that everybody uses basically. What's fascinating. Uh, Gizmodo points out, while a six-pin lock has close to 330,000 combinations, the spy key method can narrow that down to just three. An attacker could easily test these three to see which one works, and they can basically make a replica of your key, Hmm. which is terrifying. And at first, you know, it talks about, well... They have to be able to, you know, listen to your lock and blah, 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 blah. The thing that is as well terrifying is all they would have to do. I mean, granted, these would have to be pretty sophisticated thieves, but there's a lot of things that use this kind of lock that has a lot of value locked behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. No, and it's, do they talk at all about kind of like how they figured this out was this developed exclusively to do this i'm it doesn't say how they found it but it's this university in singapore that was doing some sort of study and they found that this is something that could be done Hmm. um 
but they were like, well, the thief also needs to record the key sound from within four inches of the lock to get a clear enough recording. Not an easy feat by any means. So you're like, oh, okay, I'm not worried about this. Yeah. Well, first, I'm not worried about it for me, but I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's, no one's ever going to do this. But then the last paragraph is like, oh, never mind. <laughs> However, the researchers suggest that malware installed on a target smartphone could be used to record the sound of the lock over and over for several days. And they're really okay. doing the thieves thinking for them by this point, aren't they? This is what the, the article says, because the university is basically telling the thief how to be able to do this. But yeah, I mean, if you want to get in somewhere and you're a thief that can put malware on someone's phone that can record, which would probably not be near as hard as it sounds like it could be. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of reply all and it seems very easy to hack people's phones and it's terrifying. Uh, hmm. It's crazy, but someone could get into your house by just listening to your key going into the lock. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that also if you have a security system, it's fairly easy in a way to do the same thing. You know, you try and watch somebody put in their code. That's the thing. It's not something that you have to super worry about because if somebody wants to break in, they, they're they going to break it. They can literally throw a rock through your window too. I listened to an episode of Reply All the other day about somebody that hacked into somebody's uh, Snapchat because – Apparently, a thing is if you have a very desirable username on any sort of social media, uh, like they call them an OG account, like you got butthole at Twitter, you know, or whatever, and someone wants that because they want to be twitter.com slash butthole, they will hack your phone, steal it, and then sell it on the dark web. For like thousands of dollars. Hmm. It's it's pretty insane. But the way that they do it was even crazier because basically they find out who your cell phone provider is and they call the cell phone company and be like, hey, um, I lost my SIM card. They'll like get a burner phone. They'll be like, I lost my SIM card. Can you port uh, my phone number to this SIM card? Blah, blah, blah. And they will. And that's how they would do it. And it was just literally just a phone call to the phone company and they would get that person, that person's phone, which then would have all this stuff. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. That's wild. But I mean, there's like 15 all, year olds doing it. <laughs> yeah. Reply all will make you terrified of all of your technology because it's a, uh, it shows you the vulnerabilities and that's a good thing because yeah, that one about phishing sounds funny too. Yeah. So I saw a really weird thing this week, and it's called BioVisor. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this in uh, in chat so everybody can check it out, and I want to hear how everybody thinks that they would whether they would use one of these. So we have all kind of gotten used to, and me and Kirk talked about the other day that literally I went into the gas station the other day, and it feels weird to go in without a mask at this point. I'm so used to wearing a mask, it felt like it felt weird. And this takes it to the next level. This company, and they have a very successful Indiegogo campaign that they have they have funded this thing. Um, they have raised already almost a million dollars on Indiegogo. Is this guy at Epcot? It does look like he's at Epcot, doesn't it? <laughs> it he's selling, not, what, it looks selling like what's it. called the BioVisor. And the BioVisor looks like you're wearing a space suit. It 100% looks like just a the top half of a space suit. It's just suit. the top half of a space suit, yeah. basically. And what it is, is it's personal protective equipment that has air purifier. It has like fans on the back. It has batteries. It has literally those little side things you see on there have reversible gloves in them. So if you so need you to like scratch your, face. your face, you like stick your hand into the, into the thing and like can scratch your face. And I think that it like folds up, but it lasts eight hours on a charge, all the fans and everything. It's like, it, it keeps the, the airflow good. It's supposed to not fog up. And it is just, in, and I mean, it's also an N95 air filter. So this is also effective against viruses. Unlike like, if you see somebody just with like a hardware store mask on, that's more for everyone else. So they're not coughing all over everything. This is actually like, the medical grade air purification. 
and literally they're sold out right now. They don't get back onto having some in stock until the end of September. And their half price pre-order price is $250, which honestly, that's that's honestly less than I thought it would be. No, if you look at this thing, you'll get it. I mean, it, it looks preposterous, but at the same time, I kind of want one. It looks amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, somebody time. could sneeze on your face and you would be unaffected. But also, the first time I saw this, I was thinking of the scene in Rocket Man where he sneezes from inside his spacesuit. <laughs> and that's what I don't want to happen because your little like reversible gloves will not save you. It's it's gonna be it's gonna just be messed up in there. Uh, this thing looks crazy, but also amazing. Would you wear this time. thing? I think I would. I think I would. It's it's. I kind of want one now. I would look like an idiot, but I feel like everyone would also wish they had one. <laughs> <laughs> Except for. I mean, there'd be a group of people that would call you a sheeple for wearing one, but honestly, it's pretty crazy looking. And I mean, you got your Halloween co- like costume already. You could go from like somebody from Outbreak or something like that. You know, I feel like that does look like what they wear in like when there's highly contagious like Ebola victims or something. You know, they they wear that type of heavy protective gear. But it's just I crazy. I that- the wrong link in the in the other stuff. I was trying to. Wait. Share that link in the in not just the Twitch, and I share the <laughs> something else. Are you Twigs? Are you saying that you feel like people could sneak up on you, or that you could sneak sneak up on people? People could sneak up on you because you can't see behind you. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that def- And I mean, there's like fans. <laughs> you're in like a spacesuit. Yeah, you wouldn't hear anything. I feel like it would be weird. I feel like it would be super weird. It does seem weird. And would you like bonk your head on stuff all the time? I feel like you get a lot of like (laughs) practical gags out of wearing that thing. (laughs) Hey, I would finally be a normal height. Yeah. I mean, it does look like it makes you easily like half a foot taller. I mean, you would look like an alien or something. You look like an astronaut. So, I mean, if that's what you're going for, a tall astronaut, this is, don't let your dreams be dreams. (laughs) So I found this article in Today I Learned. It's not an article. It's a Wikipedia about this guy. And at the surface, it seems okay. I've heard this before. The whole idea that geniuses are not born, they're made. You know, you have people, you know, you've heard people say it. You've, and whatever. This guy Laszlo Polgar, and I don't know how to say it correctly because I think it's uh, Hungarian. Um, <sighs> this guy put it to the test. And it, he took it to such a different level that it's kind of nuts. So he's a psychologist uh, and a chess teacher. Uh, so he kind of already was you know, in, in the chess for some reason, but <laughs> in the chess for some reason, I don't know. It's weird, but he had this concept that geniuses were not made. I mean, they were made, not born. And he experimented on his own kids, but he wasn't married or anything when he had this idea. Oh, when wait. He was so he ma- played the long game. He's like, I'm going to oh. make some geniuses, but there's a lot of steps that I have to go through. Exactly. Uh, Polgar studied intelligence when he was at univer- when he was a university student. He later recalled that when I looked at the life story of geniuses during the student years, I found the same thing. They all started at a very young age and studied intensely. He prepared for fatherhood prior to marriage. <laughs> he reported to People Magazine in 1987 by studying the biographies of 400 great intellectuals, from Socrates to Einstein. He concluded that if he took the right approach to child rearing, he could turn any healthy newborn into a genius. And in 1992, he told the Washington Post, a genius is not born, but is educated and trained. When a child is born healthy, it is a potential genius. Then he started to basically reach out to different women. He he, He basically had this courtship with the Ukrainian foreign language teacher 
and he told her what his concept was and he wanted to try it on his own kids and they came with like, with an agreement they ended up getting married and but she knew ahead of time you know that he wanted to do this um i guess that's good if he's going to go like crazy and so he had three daughters he he homeschooled them and he primarily taught them how to play chess like that was a thing he's like i'm going to teach them to be the best chess players in the world so him and his wife both taught their children at home and they basically they they didn't know at first what they were going to try to make them be geniuses at they tried mathematics or foreign languages they landed on chess um so we could do the same thing with any subject. If you start early, spend lots of time and give great love to that one subject is what his concept was. I want to put it this way. Long story short, this is a really good article. I mean, it's a Wikipedia, so there's a bunch of facts and stuff. But long story short, three girls, He, all three of them ended up being the top 10 chess players in the world. One of them became the best in the world for over 20 years hmm. to the point where in uh, where was it 2008, which just kind of blows my mind. The world's highest ranked female chess player for nearly 20 years. She became the second best woman chess player in the world. No, that, that was his one became the best. The other one was the second best. And the other one was like sixth best. I didn't really realize there was divisions of uh, like sex on chess. Yes, because uh, the the one that was the best in the world was the first woman ever to qualify for the men's world championship, hmm. and in two thousand eight, and they still denied her to participate. <laughs> stupid, <laughs> which is crazy. It's so stupid. Why would there need to be a male and female division I in don't, chess? It, okay, so probably stupid. because chess is so old that it has like real stupid old laws in it. Like, you know, like the rules are antiquated. It's yeah, probably. But um there's apparently they've been interviewed and stuff because they talk they 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 talk about the guardian and people magazine and Washington post. Cause they've guess you know, it's famous. It's a famous story. I'd never heard it before, but it's a famous story, but they talk about how you would think that these girls would kind of be a little weird. Cause they were homeschooled and Just only played, played chess, chess all the time <laughs> with their parents and each other yeah. only, but that all of these girls seem very well, like adapted to regular interactions with people and everything like that. And that one of them is a, is a housewife and does interior design. The, the other one still does chess, uh, but that they're actually more apt to interact with people at chess tournaments than other chess players. I mean that, <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Honestly, it does give me the mental image of someday some like, I hope she has granddaughters. And one day some boy comes over and she's like, hey, you want to play chess? And he thinks he's smart and he gets <laughs> destroyed by this girl's grandma because she is just a sleeper pick at being a maid. Three moves. Chess. No, yeah, that's I, it's I, crazy. Okay, if you could have picked for yourself what to be a genius at as a child, what would you have chosen? I think it would be an instrument. Like I would want to be like a savant yeah. on an instrument. Oh, yeah, you know, like definitely a, instrument. Uh, an amazing. I I'd would be like, okay like with the, piano or guitar. I would. I was gonna say guitar, but violin's really cool too. Like when someone's amazing at a violin, it's nuts. Like it's beautiful. It's uh, it's otherworldly. So uh, yeah, I think it would be an instrument. Me too. But yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to think about that because yeah, you always hear like the nature versus nurture of things, and there's also like that that whole idea that how many people have not had any access to even basic levels of education to find how how genius they are, you know. So it really does. That's a it's really interesting to hear kind of somebody who not only tried to prove that you could do that, but tried to do that with his own kids and like literally talked to his wife. It was literally planned and executed on. And it's like, 
okay. That's he had a theory in college, and then he made an agreement with a woman that he's like, hey, let's have kids, but I'm telling you ahead of time. I'm going to try and make them geniuses. I'm going to try to make them geniuses. I have this theory, and we're going to put it to the test. Uh, and, of course, you know, at first he got a lot of flack and stuff, but then people thought he was a genius for doing it because it worked. <laughs> like, oh, my like, did it. <laughs> If it yep, wouldn't have worked wild. though, and his his girls couldn't say words but could play chess amazing, then I'm sure everyone yeah, would have hated everybody him. would look on that differently. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's that's wild. Okay, I have I have one more thing that I've discovered this week that you need to know about because there was a couple of these that blew my mind. So I saw this dumb dumb like clickbait article. You know, as soon as it's like a long listicle about like, oh, you've been doing this. It's like, okay, yeah. But some of these did blow my mind. Okay, Tic Tacs. I always like try to pour them in my hand. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to open it and tip it on its side and it'll literally pour one out onto the door. They designed, I've seen that. They designed it to do that. Um, the one, okay, underneath your oven the place where you put all your baking sheets, that's a warming drawer. It's not supposed to just hold all your extra oven stuff. Been doing that wrong forever. Yeah, same. You are supposed to store peanut butter upside down because then the oil disperses throughout and it doesn't form on top. I didn't know that. If you are using a flat plunger, like the one that's just flat and doesn't have the extension on it, you're using a sink plunger on your toilet. (laughs) Yeah. The one that you're supposed to be using, like literally like fits into the toilet part, the bottom part. That's that's for your sink. It's for a flat surface. Chinese takeout containers are made to fold out. They don't just fold up because that's the way they are. They fold out so that you can eat it like it's a plate and then fold it back up and take it away. What? I did not know that at all. Yeah. You know, those little white. Yeah. Boxes? Like the sides yeah, have you flat. Can unfold you can them unfold and it those? folds out. It's a plate. Then you can fold it back up and take it away. Did not know that. Yeah, amazing. Um, there's a there is a straw holder on every Coke can. That little gap in the tab is so you can stick a straw in there and it won't float out of your soda. Some of these we we ha- we do know. Um, and then also a lot of saucepans, if they have a little hole on the end, that's not just so you can hang it up. That's so you can stick your spoon in it, and it'll literally hold your spoon up over your over your pot. I've seen similar articles like this and I've start. there's a few things like that one I started doing because I, I read this or something like this. Um, I, I've seen the Tic Tac one. I haven't done it, but I never have Tic Tacs. The one that blew my mind is the, um, the takeout container. That's amazing. I got to do that. <laughs> yeah. It makes me want some Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, now I think a lot of people know it, but, I didn't ever know that on your gas pump thing or your gas gauge that there's an arrow on which side the the thing's at, which side the your actual place where you can fill up the, like yeah. the door is. There's a little arrow right next to the the symbol for the gas pump, and I didn't know that for years. And then, like in like a year and a half, two years ago, I saw an article like this, and they're like, "Hey, did you know this thing?" I'm like, "No." Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was, there was like a couple of these that were interesting in general. Some were just like, meh, but some blew my mind. But other than that, but yeah, I think that's, uh, that's everything for this week. If you want to check out a new album that is pretty awesome, Run the Jewels 4 is out and it is insanely <laughs> high energy and it's good. Run the Jewels. It's Josh's favorite, right? It's a it's a really great album, but you have to like very high energy hip hop. But yeah, uh, thanks everybody for checking out the show. We really appreciate it. We have the Podcast Discovery Club on Facebook where you can join in and get some of these random discoveries throughout the week and get in touch with us. We have a Twitter. We have a Twitch channel. We have a YouTube channel. We have a page on Spotify. Any way that you can get in touch, if you Google search the Podcast Discovery Show, there's a lot of different options, but we'd love to hear from you, and we really appreciate you listening. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you guys next week.
was a podcast from the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com.